I'm John Pierce. They've asked me to point out the many special features of your new Subaru Legacy. It's an exceptional car. I imagine by now you've had the chance to drive it, and <laughs> I bet you're pretty excited. Well, I know we are. Maybe you're even a little surprised by your Subaru's sure-footed agility, its responsive handling and power. Especially you new owners of the Legacy Wagon must know what we mean by surprising performance, and best of all, it's all under your personal control. Subaru's been here in the U.S. for over 20 years. We've been pioneers in front-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. We've always prided ourselves on providing value and unconventional solutions to all too conventional challenges. Your legacy is powered by Subaru's time-tested boxer engine, featuring four valves per cylinder and overhead camshaft technology. The Ferrari Testarossa and Porsche 911 use similar technology. It's not bad company for us to keep, or for them, for that matter. And speaking of high-performance cars, the Subaru Legacy has just set a new world speed endurance record. Over 138 miles an hour for 18 consecutive days. 100,000 kilometers, that's over 62,000 miles. Stopping only for fuel and driver changes in a Legacy sedan very much like yours. But remember, don't exceed the posted speed limits. Like both the Ferrari and Porsche 911, your Legacy has four-wheel disc brakes, front and rear independent suspension. Uh, you may have opted for the extra assurance of four-wheel drive, which Porsche has finally adopted. Maybe Ferrari eventually will. You may have opted for our state-of-the-art anti-lock brake system. Or maybe your Legacy has Subaru's self-leveling air suspension or four-speed automatic transmission. It's no matter. We'll explain all of that as we go along. While we feel this video introduction to your new Subaru Legacy will be both helpful and interesting, the best way to really understand its many special features is to carefully read the more detailed owner's manual. Let's take the time to go through its clearly organized pages so you can acquaint yourself with your new car's operation and you can fully enjoy all that your legacy has to offer. And remember, the owner's manual is there to answer your questions and to serve as a handy reference guide when you need it. To make this video even easier to use, you'll find a time code in the lower right corner of the screen. You can reference anything in the video by using the index card packaged with the videotape. Maybe we should start here. These keys work all the locks on the car. Doors, ignition, trunk, glove box. This one has a light in it to help you open the car at night. This is the valet key. It will not open the trunk or the glove box. It's a good idea to make a duplicate of the Submaster key and keep it in a safe place. Now carry the original in your wallet or pocketbook, just in case. And keep the master and the valet keys on your keychain for everyday use. And of course you'll record the key number. Keep it someplace other than the car. Turning the key part way unlocks only the driver's door. Turning it all of the way unlocks all of the doors if you have power door locks. The driver's door can always be opened from the inside. The other doors must be unlocked first. With power door locks, operating the lock switch on the driver's door locks and unlocks all doors. And the lift gate for the Legacy station wagon. Your Legacy has child safety locks on the rear doors that override the normal locking system. With the child locks on, the door can't be opened from the inside. Use them when children are riding in the rear. When the ignition is turned on, the passive shoulder harness moves out of the way when the door opens and moves into place when the door is closed. It doesn't need any adjustment. Make sure that it's over the shoulder and not under the arm. It combines with a knee bolster and the manually operated lap belt to provide passenger restraint. If the key won't turn easily, try moving the steering wheel a little from side to side to help release the anti-theft steering lock. While adjusting everything else, move the steering wheel out of the way with the lift-up knob. After the lap belt is on, adjust the seat, fore aft first. Place the seat so that your wrists will just about reach the top of the steering wheel when you're leaning back into the seat. Now for height. Unless you are very tall, raising the seat will usually give the best visibility. Back rake. Sitting as straight as possible is best for most people, and it helps maximize seat belt effectiveness. For safety's sake, never adjust the seat while driving. Reach under the wheel and pull the tilt lever toward you. 
After adjusting the steering wheel to the desired position, simply release the lever, thus locking the wheel in place. Now the wheel is adjusted. To make sure it's easier to get in and out of your legacy, use the lift up lever on the left side of the column. Spring action will raise the column out of the way. Make sure the column is securely locked before driving and never try to adjust the column with the car in motion. To help prevent whiplash injuries, the head restraint should be just above or level with the top of the ears. Just pull it up. To lower it, push the lock button and the pad down at the same time. Make sure the passenger's head restraint is also adjusted properly. On the LS model, the fore and aft angle of the restraint can be changed with the knob on the side. For more comfort, the LS also has a lumbar support adjustment on the driver's seat. If you have power windows, you'll notice the special auto switch feature for the driver's window. There are two positions for this switch. Press lightly on the front or rear until you feel a click. The window will go up or down until you stop pressing. A slightly harder push completely opens or closes the window. Another light touch will stop the window. There is also a lock switch, which keeps all the windows except the drivers from opening or closing even if the individual switches are pressed. A good safety feature with children in the car. Now, mirrors. Try adjusting it so that it's just a bit to the right of where most people have it. This helps to increase your field of vision. Make sure that it's left on the day position unless the headlights behind you are blinding. And be sure to switch it back when they're not. The outside mirrors should be brought in so that your legacy is just visible, a reference to help you place objects behind you. Then, swing them out so that your own car is just out of view when you are sitting normally. It all becomes easy if your legacy has power mirrors. Just select left or right with a rocker switch, then use the four-way adjust. There are two more mirrors which come in handy. LS special touches include lighted vanity mirrors mounted in the sun visors for both the driver and the front seat passenger. Now you're finally ready to start the car. If your legacy has a manual gearbox, the clutch pedal must be depressed. If it's an automatic, it must be in neutral or park. Preferably park before the starter will work. Your legacy also has computer-controlled ignition and fuel injection. It doesn't need help, so keep your foot off the gas pedal, unless the weather is very cold. And turn the key to start until the engine starts. If the weather is very cold, well below zero, use a light throttle foot. While the car is starting, notice the warning lights on both sides of the instrument panel. They should light with the key in the on position and go off very soon after the car starts. If they don't light or go off, have your dealer find out why soon. If your legacy has an automatic transmission, it features a transmission interlock, which requires you to have your foot on the brake before you can shift out of park. You should brake in your new legacy for the first thousand miles. Try to avoid driving at a steady speed for long periods of time or lugging the engine. Check engine oil each time you add fuel. Avoid very high RPMs, over 4,000, except in case of emergency. Try to avoid maximum acceleration, slipping the clutch, very rough roads, or any severe use for the first 1,000 miles. Care will give you better performance and a longer car life. Subaru's optional electronically controlled automatic transmission has four speeds forward and one reverse. Fourth is overdrive and a manual mode to give the driver more control. Since the transmission has an electronically activated shifter interlock, if the battery is dead or there is some other electrical fault, the transmission interlock would normally keep the transmission locked in park, which would keep the car from being towed. There's an emergency interlock release just forward of the shift lever at the bottom of its base. After pressing it, the transmission can be shifted to neutral and the car can be moved. The shift lever has a large button near its top, which must be pushed when shifting into or out of park into reverse from neutral, and when shifting down from third to second. Never depend on park alone to hold the car. Use the handbrake too. The drive range is for all normal driving. The transmission will automatically shift up and down through all four forward speeds in drive, with gears selected automatically based on the load on the car and how quickly the gas pedal is depressed. Use three for climbing grades. The transmission will downshift to two or even one if necessary, and will not upshift into fourth unless there is a risk of over-revving the engine. Use two for driving through sand or mud, extra engine braking, or climbing steep hills. In two, the transmission can downshift to one, which is best for driving up or down very steep grades. 
You can select the manual mode by using the manual switch located just below the shift lock on the side of the shift lever. The manual mode should be used for mountain driving or driving on slippery surfaces. Push the button again to release manual. If for some reason your car requires towing, it's best to contact your Subaru dealer or a commercial towing service. If not available, follow these guidelines. Release the parking brake, placing the transmission in neutral. Top off the transmission and differential oil levels if necessary. Slowly take up any slack in the tow line. And remember, the ignition switch should be in the ACC position and never on lock while the car is being towed. While your Subaru is designed primarily to carry passengers, it can also tow a trailer. Provided the necessary safety precautions are taken, the proper equipment is used, and the correct procedures are followed. Now remember, towing a trailer and its load does put extra strain on your car's components. Engine, drive shaft, tires, brakes, and fuel economy. And be sure not to exceed a combined cargo and trailer weight of 2,000 pounds. And avoid towing during the first 1,000 miles of new car use. If your legacy has air conditioning, you'll find that Subaru's outstanding climate control system maintains a stable temperature while providing better economy and better performance. You'll notice that when defogging your windshield, the air conditioning system turns on automatically. The air conditioner also serves to dehumidify the air. If you possibly can, set your climate control before you drive off, for safety's sake again. Notice the on-off light in each of the selector buttons. If you don't have air conditioning, set the temperature control on hot, that is, full red. Heat will then be directed onto the windshield to evaporate the moisture. Even with your control turned off, fresh air will come in through the floor vents as long as the car is moving. Pushing the off button also turns the fan off. Vent brings in fresh air through the instrument panel vents. It's best to adjust them so that they distribute air evenly through the car. Bilev brings fresh air in through dash vents and warmed air at floor level. By sliding the temperature control to hot, the temperature can almost be equalized. The heat button automatically turns the air conditioner off, then puts most of the air on the floor, with the rest going to the windshield. With the defrost heat button, air will be directed to the windshield, doors for side window defogging, and to the floor. Defrost puts all of the air on the windshield and side windows. If your legacy does not have air conditioning, there is a circ button that recirculates air through the ventilators to keep traffic fumes out. Use Max AC to cool and dehumidify the car as quickly as possible. Air comes out through the vents and is recirculated, which helps to keep the fumes out. If you've been parked in the sun, drive with the windows open for a while just to clear the hot air. AC brings in fresh refrigerated air and helps to reduce driver fatigue by letting you keep the windows closed and the air at the most comfortable temperature. Temperature is simply adjusted by mixing red for heat with blue for cooled or fresh air. The fan will boost airflow through the car but slightly increases the noise level, especially on 4. If your legacy features a sunroof, you'll notice that when you push the close down button, a safety feature keeps it from closing all the way. To close it completely, release the switch and press it again. The sun shade will open and close automatically but you can also operate it manually. To tilt the sunroof, push the up switch. This also lights up an indicator on your instrument panel. The sound system will work with the ignition on, or the key turned to the ACC position. But before turning on the sound system, set the clock by pushing the DISP and H buttons at the same time. This advances the hours. Then press the display and M buttons to advance the minutes. Normally, this will only have to be done when the car is new, or to change for time zones, or if the battery is disconnected for some reason. Also located in the center of the dash is a handy cup holder that slides out for use. Subaru has enhanced your listening pleasure by offering several outstanding sound system choices. You may have the full function AM-FM cassette combination, or the high powered 40 watt AM-FM stereo, or the concert hall sounding 80 watt AM-FM cassette with graphic equalizer, whatever you have. Great music is at your fingertips. The radio can be tuned several ways. By pushing the up or down button, by using the scan function to search for stations, or you can use the preset buttons to store your favorite AM and FM stations. And, if you have the cassette tape player, it can be played any time the set is turned on.
Your legacy sound system may come equipped with one of two types of graphic equalizers. The LS comes standard with a preset model, which allows you to select five different tone quality patterns, each one specifically suited for one type of maximum sound reproduction. Jazz, pop, rock, classic and news. A push of the EQ button automatically selects the desired tone pattern. A tunable slide bar equalizer comes as an accessory with the L model. You use the slide bar to manually adjust the tone patterns you prefer. Remember that FM programming can be affected by buildings or mountains between the transmitter and the radio, and that the signal may be interrupted as you drive. AM is interrupted by tunnels and electronic interference like high tension wires and certain kinds of electrical equipment, or even the ignition systems of some vehicles. If you have a manual antenna, make sure it's fully extended and clean. Occasionally wipe the antenna with a cloth and a very light coating of petroleum jelly, and don't forget to retract it when going through the car wash. If you have the legacy four-wheel drive LS station wagon with automatic transmission, it will also come with air suspension, which is self-leveling, to suit various speed and road conditions. The height control switch will allow you to raise the wagon about an inch and a half for very rough road conditions, but only at lower speeds. Over about 55 miles per hour, the car automatically returns to its normal height. When your speed drops below 40, the car will rise again. The shocks automatically adjust to help maintain vehicle stability. If you have four-wheel drive, you will have increased traction in wet weather or dry. Full-time four-wheel drive, like the Legacies, is fully automatic and has no special controls. If you must use snow chains, make sure that they are mounted on the front wheels only. Your Legacy is an all-road vehicle rather than an all-terrain vehicle. Now, the cruise control master switch must be on before the stock controls will work. Get in the habit of turning the master switch off after you use cruise control to prevent activating it accidentally. To use the cruise control, turn the master switch on. The light in the switch will be on when the switch is on. The cruise control itself is attached to the right-hand side of the steering wheel, where it can be easily operated by one finger. After accelerating to any speed over 25 miles per hour, press the cruise lever down to set it. The legacy will remain at the set speed until you touch the brake, or until the road grade gets so steep that the car can no longer hold the set speed. Pressing down again and holding will set the coast mode, which releases the throttle and slows the car. Releasing the switch will reset the cruise control at a lower speed. Lifting the lever after coasting will cause the cruise control to seek a new speed, which may be different than originally selected. For this reason, it is necessary to reset the speed you desire. Lifting the lever and holding it up will accelerate the car. Releasing it will reset the cruise at the new speed. To increase the speed by increments of one mile per hour, press the resume switch. To decrease by one mile per hour, press the coast switch. Don't use the cruise control on gravel, snow and ice, or other slippery surfaces, in heavy traffic, or on any steep up or down grade. With the key on, the stock on the left-hand side of the steering wheel activates the light switch, the turn signal lever, and headlight dimmer. The headlight flasher will operate with the key off. There is also a parking light switch on top of the steering column that works without the key. With the key on, rotate the switch away from you. The first position is for the front and rear parking lights and license light. The second position turns the headlights on. Push the stock away from you to switch from high to low beam or low to high. Check to see whether the headlights are on high beam. The blue lights in the center of the instrument panel indicate high beam. Pulling the stock toward you flashes the lights, what the Europeans call a light horn. It works with the headlights on or off and can be used as a warning at intersections or to signal passing. Don't use the light horn for more than a second or two at a time, and be careful about blinding other traffic with it. Instrument lights are adjusted with the ring around the stock. It works whenever the dash lights are on. Rotating it toward you makes the lights dimmer. Like most cars, pushing up on the switch is a right signal, down a left. Wiper and washer controls are on the right side of the column. Like the headlights, they operate only with the key on. They have a low and high speed and a mist feature. Some also have an intermittent range that on some models can be adjusted for interval. The first click is intermittent best used when there is a light rain or heavy fog. If there is an interval adjustment, it's controlled by the ring around the stock. Second click is low, third click high. 
It's generally best to operate the wipers at the lowest speed that will keep the windshield clear. Mist is controlled by pulling the lever toward you and releasing it. The wipers will make one swipe, then park. Holding it will keep the wipers working. Pressing the end of the stalk will wash the windshield and, on most legacy models, operate the wipers too. Never start the wipers on a dry windshield. It may scratch. And always keep fluid in the washer tank. The reservoir for the windshield is located under the hood. The rear window washer tank for the wagon is located on the left side of the cargo area. Also on the left side of the driver's seat, you'll find the fuel fill door release located on the floor. Pull the latch and the lid pops open, giving you access to the filler cap. The hill holder is a Subaru exclusive. It helps the driver of a manual transmission car to stop and start on a hill easily by holding the brakes automatically, keeping the car from rolling back down the hill. When stopping facing uphill, step on the brake and clutch at the same time. Then release the brake. As long as your foot holds the clutch all the way down, the brakes will remain on, freeing the right foot for the gas pedal. To start on a hill, increase engine speed and start to release the clutch. The brakes will release automatically. If your legacy has the ABS anti-lock braking system, you know this advanced safety feature is designed to keep your wheels from locking up during sudden braking or braking on slippery surfaces. When the ABS is operating, you might feel a slight pulsation coming from the steering wheel and hear a mechanical noise, but this is normal and doesn't indicate a problem. Your legacy has storage room everywhere. Have you found them all yet? To secure the trunk area, flip the switch on each of the seat back latches to lock them. Then disconnect the interior trunk release at the trunk latch. The trunk can now be opened only with the master or submaster key. The Legacy Station Wagon provides all the performance and driving pleasure of the sedan, with even more utility. All the driving controls are the same, only the load carrying area is different. To open the rear gate, turn the key clockwise, then release the handle and raise the gate. Lock it by turning the key counterclockwise. If you have power door locks, they will also unlock the lift gate. Never drive with the gate open. Exhaust fumes may be drawn into the wagon. There's a warning light on the instrument panel to remind you that the rear gate is open. To fold the seats flat, it's necessary to remove the rear headrests if your wagon has them. To make maximum use of the wagon's cargo area, move the front seats forward, remove the rear seat headrests, pull up on the strap at the center of the seat bottom and swing the seat bottom up. Then unlatch and lower the rear seat backs. Remount the headrests in the sockets provided. Your legacy also has a luggage cover in the cargo area. The cover protects items from sunlight. It rolls in and out and is held in place by hooks. It rewinds automatically and is detachable. Be sure not to remove it without first rewinding it. When folding down the wagon's back seat, use the seat belt pockets to store the seat belts so they don't fall beneath the seat cushion. The wagon has a light in the luggage area with a three position switch that allows it to be left on, turned off completely, or to go on when the rear hatch is opened. Don't let passengers ride in the storage area and make sure that loose cargo won't cause damage in an emergency stop or during hard cornering. When you return the rear seat to its original position, make sure that the seat belts are properly positioned for use. In the event of a flat tire, you'll find the spare tire, depending on which legacy you have, either under the floor of the trunk or luggage compartment, beneath the multi-box storage container. First, take out the box, then turn the tire holder counterclockwise and remove the tire. To replace a flat tire, you'll need to use the jack. It's stored on the left side of the trunk or luggage compartment. The jack handle is stored in the multi-box storage container. Your legacy has a T-type spare tire. Keep it inflated to 60 pounds per square inch. And when riding on it, do not exceed 50 miles per hour. Now remember, it's intended for temporary use only. So replace it with a new tire as soon as possible. When inserting the jack into one of the jack up points, Make sure it's correctly placed on the flange in the side of the sill. Turn the jack screw by hand until it engages. Insert the jack handle, then raise the car until the tire clears the ground.
Don't forget to place wheel blocks both in front of and behind the wheel diagonally opposite the tire to be changed before jacking up the car. You can also store the flat tire. Place the flat in the spare tire container and screw the nut tightly back onto the holder. Again, check your owner's manual for more details. To help your tires perform their best and last longer, check your tire pressure, which is best done when the tires are cold. There's a tire pressure chart in your owner's manual. To open the hood, pull the release. Then release the safety catch. Use the prop to hold the hood up. You'll notice there are two prop points. One allows you to open the hood a little wider than usual. All the items an owner can check are within easy reach and marked in yellow with symbols on caps or handles. Oil dipstick, oil filler cap, fuse box, automatic transmission dipstick and filler cap, coolant filler, brake fluid reservoir, and windshield washer bottle. Be sure to stay clear of moving engine parts, including the thermostatically operated fan. After the thousand mile break-in period, make it a habit to check oil at least every third tank of gas. Now turn the engine off and be careful not to touch anything around the dipstick handle. It may be hot. Carefully pull the dipstick out. Wipe the oil off and push the stick back down the tube. Make sure that it's all the way in. Then pull it out again. The oil level should be between the holes on the F and L side. If it's below the bottom hole, add oil. Now, if the dipstick is inserted improperly, an incorrect reading may result. See your printed owner's manual for weight and grade for your type of driving. Oil in a screw top container is easiest to add and any unused amount is easiest to store. It's unlikely that oil will ever be over the top hole, but if it is, it may indicate a cooling or fuel system problem. See your dealer. The Legacy has a semi-sealed cooling system that should seldom need coolant added. Never, never remove the radiator cap. Instead, just look at the level of coolant through the translucent tank. Coolant an inch or two below the full mark is fine. If the tank is overfilled, the excess will be forced out when it warms and expands. I'll be certain that the antifreeze that you use is safe for aluminum. And try to keep the coolant that you add a 50-50 mixture of water and antifreeze. Both the power steering and automatic transmission use Dexron 2 automatic transmission fluid. They must be checked with the fluid warm. You can buy Dexron 2 at your Subaru dealer or at most auto parts stores and filling stations. After the automatic transmission is warm, this will take several miles of driving, put the car on a level surface and place the transmission in park. Keep the engine running and carefully remove the dipstick. It will be hot. Using a cloth or paper towel, wipe it clean. Push it back into the tube all of the way and pull it out again. The fluid should be between the marks. If fluid must be added, add a little at a time by using a long funnel with a tip small enough to fit down the dipstick tube. The power steering is very easy to reach and check. With the engine off, just remove the cap with the dipstick built in. Wipe it, check the level, and add Dexron 2 as necessary, a very small amount at a time. There are marks for both hot and cold fluid levels, but it's best to check it hot. If the automatic transmission or power steering require regular refilling, it may indicate a problem. See your dealer. There is a separate dipstick for the transaxle. Checking and adding lubricant is the same process as for the transmission itself, but the lubricant is different. For the proper lubricant to use, see your owner's manual. The washer tank is translucent, so that just a look is enough to see the level. Don't let your windshield washer tank run out of cleaning fluid. You can damage the washer pump by trying to operate it dry. When possible, use windshield washer fluid from your dealership or an auto parts store. If the fluid isn't available, use plain water, but remember that it may freeze in cold weather and may damage the washer tank. Regular washer fluid has an antifreeze in it. The main fuse box is located in the engine compartment. Its latch is at its rear. There is another fuse box containing fuses for the radio and other equipment located under the dash. A fuse chart showing capacities and locations is inside the fuse box cover. Never use a fuse with an improper rating. The brake master cylinder reservoir is also translucent. Just check the level through the side.
carefully wipe the master cylinder reservoir cap before removing it. If brake fluid must be added, make sure that it is rated DOT3 or higher and that no dirt gets in while adding fluid. If fluid has to be added often, see your dealer immediately. For a detailed explanation of the features and functions highlighted in this video, we once again remind you to review your owner's manual to fully enjoy the pleasures of owning and driving a Subaru Legacy. Thanks for joining us and happy motoring.